afternoon namaskar welcome to our webinar pre of today it's a pleasure for me to introduce our topic and our expert speaker today after which introduction professor tripathi will cover today's topics we are very happy to note that for today's webinar we have almost 300 registration and right now around 100 people have already joined online and maybe expected few of for the people to join us online but we will not wait for the people to join they can join as and when they feel convenient and important for them so the topic title is pretty well known to you from the indian distribution company and the distribution sector issues we are pretty familiar about the utility kpis the key performance indicators are loss reduction reliability improvement and financial sustainability of the distribution sector in reliability improvement during this covid situation we understood the importance of electricity supply and along with that the quality of supply is gaining a traction without which it will be difficult for us to survive while doing so the distribution company's financial sustainability also needs to be in place so that they deliver electricity to you and me at any given point of time with the right quality for this we are familiar that we have electricity act 2003 and one of the key provisions into the electricity act is to provide 24/7 quality supply for all at an affordable rate electricity act has created an independent regulatory mechanism which most of you are familiar operating as electricity regulatory commissions in various states as well as at central level one of the key mandate for electricity regulatory commissions a tariff fixation that is what we see but if we deep dive into the electricity act mandate the quality of supply and affordability of supply and responsiveness is also coming under the mandate of the regulatory commissions when you want to ensure quality of supply there are few methods like performance publication indirect method by setting standards by putting incentive schemes so i'll not get into this detail the right side graph explains that these measures how it can become effective and how it can become complex depending on when we shift from indirect to minimum to incentive scheme when you want to do incentive scheme the complexity is also high effectiveness is also high to ensure quality of supply by regulatory measures having said that our expert speaker of today is professor ak triparty is the fellow of national academy of engineering 
he is former director general of central power research institute and currently adjunct professor of silicon institute of technology bhuvaneshwar we are grateful to have professor tripathi with us an industry veteran with four decades of experience and with a very unique blend of industrial and academic involvement he has been director general of cpri before that he was chief of transmission and distribution with bhl he is also the board member of sesu central electricity supply utility a discom in odisha and is member of the state advisory board of odisha electricity regulatory commission we are lucky as today's participants to have such a distinguished personality to speak about this topic because his expertise and interest is in power system analysis power quality and electricity regulation we are going to support him today as moderators you are seeing myself on left hand side of your screen on right hand side my colleague mr pk patnaik he is the coordinator for spark group and dgm of optcl so we both will help professor tripathi to conduct and interact with you today we are having upcoming webinar series as part of this series so the next one on 24 july and we are sure that you will be benefited from this series just keep a watch as we go on announcing and do participate while doing this we have already covered few important topics on reliability and efficiency many of you have attended among today's attendees i see that almost 90% are from utility and regulators this is encouraging for us as an organizer because we feel the sharing is caring and whatever learning we have from here if we can put something into implementation probably will be changing our sector for better with this few words a small announcement on the housekeeping measures i am sure most of you are having a good internet backbone it will be good if you are using headset so that you get a very clear sound quality in this platform generally we keep you muted but we will suggest you to put yourself into mute position as well and avoid external sound and disturbances you may have some difficulty into the system and to the connectivity so kindly put your questions into the chat box there is a chat box where you can address the organizers so that from the back end we'll try to help you solving your problem and having a decent quality of attending this webinar based e conference we again thank you for your active participation webinar recording is generally sent post event within 2 to 3 working days to all the people who have registered for the webinar we'll have the question answer session you are requested to put your questions into the chat box at the end of the speaker session we will address most of those questions and if it is not permitting within the time we will ensure that all the questions will be answered as a question and answer bank which will be transparently posted 
through the website after the completion of this webinar series. So subject, and we hope to have a good session of learning today. Over to you, Dr. Tripathi. Thank you, Vanos. Welcome to the webinar session. Uh, this is the third in the series, and uh, you, I, hope, I hope you have attended the other two. And it is my privilege to be associated with the group which is working for power quality. I have been sharing the platform with Manas and uh, the P Manifold group for the last seven or eight years. One thing I definitely like uh, the way they stand behind the copper as a material which symbolizes quality and uh, a material which is very important for engineers, particularly distribution engineers. Uh, the story is that the copper, if you say, you improve quality. It, it took me some time to understand the meaning of it, but after that I just fell for it. Now I am a strong supporter of uh, the group which is conversing our quality and uh, talking on distribution and uh, creating an awareness among people. As uh, you know that I have uh, about 40 to 45 years of experience in transmission and distribution. I have worked in the industry, I have worked in the field, I have worked also in the technical institute and R&D organization. And I will be speaking from my experience as uh, when I was uh, Director General of CPRI. And uh, I'm sure that uh, what I talk will be from my experience. And uh, we'll start without delay that uh, the distribution sector, which has been a point of uh, uh, concern for the government as well as for the public as well as for the regulators has got four uh, stakeholders mainly the discom itself the customer the government or the policy maker and the regulators we had a feeling that all the four sectors are having very knowledgeable people and they are working within their domain they understand their responsibilities and they have their own priorities but what is missing is that uh, they don't have respect for each other's priority. That is, the distribution company has got certain worries and certain concerns, which probably the regulator doesn't see. And regulators have got, some, so got certain compulsions and certain act and boundaries to work, which discounts don't appreciate. Over and above the policymakers, they think that their work is to create policies, but they don't really see that it is implemented. When I talk in detail, you will see that what have been the gaps between the understanding of the four stakeholders and all that has gone wrong or semi wrong in this sector over 25 years after unbundling is because of four groups of people not talking to each other and with a feeling and empathy for each other's concern. So when I choose the topic, I talk it I choose was fixing priorities in distribution sector post COVID. Why COVID came into picture is that COVID has created a uh, unprecedented fear and unprecedented apprehension among the people who are now planning to uh, come out of the epidemic uh, after the post lockout period. And each sector is doing their best to see that the post COVID recovery is as fast as possible and it is in a new paradigm effort and uh, with a war footing it has to be done otherwise there is a possibility that the recovery will take years and india will lose heavily on the economic front the distribution engineers we have also got a responsibility to see that what we have lost in last four months are likely to lose again for two months and the way we have to come up and then we revive quality power supply, available power supply in plenty, so that the other sectors which are responsible for adding wealth to the country, they get sufficient support from the distribution sector so that the economy of the country recovers as fast as possible. So, distribution sector has been more than 70 years old after independence, but it really became separate from generation sector before 25 years. Recently, I came to know that uh, the 25 years of 
distribution, lot of uh, acts, reforms, and uh, lot of uh, policies changes have been made and being made and will be made, but the impact at the grassroots level has not been felt. We are again and again hearing that the cumulative loss of uh, the uh, distribution sectors this comes all over the country has crossed some lakhs of crores rupees government is doing a lot of things to bail out the distribution system a lot of subsidy cross subsidies have been pumped into it and but the, nevertheless the distribution companies all over the country except one or two are incurring heavy loss figure is something like 25,000 crores every year I will deal with that in detail, but then I have structured my talk in four parts. I will talk a little bit about COVID, what damage it could do, and uh, what exactly it uh, means recovery from COVID, under what compulsions and under what uh, difficult situations people might work, and, uh, and how urgent it is. And uh, then I will go to tell about the acts and policies which have been there in the field. Before that, I will also touch upon how to resurrect the distribution sector and how important a distribution transformer is to start with uh, the, the resurrection of the group. Uh, that will be in continuity with my previous two speakers who also told that the distribution transformers are the uh, backbone of the distribution and uh, everything around distribution, quality, reliability, economic viability can be centered around the distribution transformer. And I will explain a little about how it can be done. Third, I will touch upon the policymakers' role in the whole thing, some of the important uh, reforms that have been introduced, some of them why they have failed, some of them why they are successful, and then we will go to DISCOM as such and tell that how DISCOMs should learn to cope up with the post COVID uh, emergencies and uh, how economic revival can be uh, the quickest. And there, I will tell how priority can be fixed in such a way that uh, the first thing first comes into the mind of not only the discoms, but the other four stakeholders who are supporting the discom and wish them to recover as fast as possible. So, uh, recently, uh, before going to the first slide, let me tell that I heard the, prime, the power minister expressing a concern recently that he is not happy with. Uh, the role of the regulators and he wanted them to be more dynamic and more authoritative and they, not exactly that word but then proactive and the second thing he told that uh, the distribution companies should be free from political influence these two sentences coming from para prime power minister rk singh really means that something is wrong with the way we are looking at things and the way we are looking to solve the problems in future in this sector so Prime Minister, two days back in his monkey bath, uh, he told that uh, a lot of sectors in India are under locked condition. The locking due to COVID actually reminds us that a uh, lot of other things which are locked have to be unlocked. He meant that uh, with unlocking the mindsets of people which were locked, which were overlooked, which were not given a lot of stress. Now is the time that we should look at it again and those mindsets also should be unlocked. Very true that some of the things which are moving in the way they were moving and uh, we had no particular attention or criticism to what was going on. But now is a time when the pandemic has really created a thinking in our mind that what best can be done to uh, unlock those things and come and start fresh. I even reminded of the recovery that the Japanese uh, did after the earthquake in Second World War. The whole Japan was rebuilt much better than it was. And such a pandemic really gives us an opportunity to look into everything that was done in a classical way or uh, the stereotype way, uh, whether it was uh, the right thing to do or whether things could be improved. So with this introduction, I will go to my slide one and uh, try to go as far as, as fast as possible and because we have got a uh, very short time. It's a topic which takes much more time than the 45 minutes which have been allowed to me. So show me the first slide. Okay, here is something that to start that the pandemic is really gripping the whole world and like a virus attacking a computer uh, which goes and hanging and uh, get corrupted. Something has happened to the environment, something to the, has happened to the health of the public which has made the whole world hang. 
the power sector is badly hit. We have been hearing the talk that the discounts were anyway unable to pay the genkos for the services genkos did to them because the recovery from the customers were not meeting the requirement with the present tariff structure. With a 30 percent uh, low demand, the recovery from the customers are anyway 30 percent to 40 percent less. The genkos will not get paid. They will have no money to buy coal for running the thermal plants. Loan burden will increase. Lockout restrictions might lead to further misery of the distribution sector. Look at the post-COVID management. I just saw a picture there, a lady looking at her purse and finding that it is empty. This is the same situation which discounts are uh, facing. 4.9 lakh crores cumulative payment to be made by all discounts to all generation companies. A huge amount and every year it is increasing 25,000 crores. Government has just declared a 90,000 crore liquidity injection plan for discounts post-COVID. That's a amount which will at least make the discounts float. And India has ranked 108 among 141 in the reliability index, a matter of concern anyway. And uh, I came to know that it was much better, about 10 ranks earlier better and now it is sliding down. This desperate concern in government to bring a turnaround in distribution sector. And now we have to see what are the roles to be played by the discounts, regulators, government and consumers. The objective of my talk is to see that if something more can be done than what is being done to have empathy for the one sector to have with for the other and how they can help each other in achieving common objective and uh, uh, making discounts turn around because it depends on this sector in the power supply chain whether this power supply chain will be healthy or not and all of you know that if the power sector is suffering from lock, gas lock conditions the government will come to the rescue because it is an important sector but at the cost of developing other sectors like agriculture industry and uh, at the taxpayers money so we have to be all very serious about seeing that how each other understand each other's problem and find a solution which will actually make things change post covid there will be a drastic drop of demand and it has to be handled power storage is not yet available in the country we wish it would have been distribution companies must financially be bailed out it has to run Reliability of power supply has to be very high for faster recovery of the industry. We are talking of MSME and uh, startups and big industries coming in large numbers, replacing the Chinese industry by make in India effort. All that requires quite a lot of power. And uh, this power has to be not only supplied but managed. And the managers of this power has to also make some earning for themselves. Sector must look forward to the Atman University, what Prime Minister tells, provides support to the startups. More grid independent systems like uh, uh, regular the distributed generators, microgrids have to be expedited. Uh, why I call grid independent is that uh, if the grid uh, is the only source of supplying the power, then uh, the crisis in such kind of pandemic and uh, cyclones and other things is really very hard on the public. Social distancing has to be respected. This will create new safety standards. Relaxation to be passed on to late payment, already a measure taken. A lot of force measure issues will come up from every quarter. All projects which have been running late will run further late. And all problems of labor will increase with the migration of laborers. So in the next three, four months, the quantity of problems to be faced by all sectors is unimaginable and uh, this has to be dealt and uh, so we, with this introduction to the what COVID can tell let me draw your attention to one thing if we have to resurrect the distribution sector where do we start distribution starts from 33 kv by 11 kv substation 11 kv 2.433 poles distribution transformers and the households and the Key equipment, which is a capex item, which is a high cost item, is the distribution transformer. And uh, on the 
upper side it is up to the 33 kb and the lower side it is to the distribution plug point of the customer long time we have been advocating that this distribution transformer efficiency has to be very high and now star rated the transformers are available they have to take can be replaced old ones have to be replaced they can be rated for higher rating and not only the material used in transformers has to change to copper and for quality reasons but the protection of the transformer the uh, the uh, handling of the unbalance on the transformer the ratings the changeovers the other ancillary uh, materials the cable connections the high voltage transmission uh, distribution all have to be taken care if we have to increase the reliability of the system the picture here shows a distribution transformer although it looks like that it is a, a very innocent item but it is the backbone of the distribution system in the country now health and the profitability of the distribution transformer is important for the financial viability of the power sector i, I will explain it a little further that when the distribution transformer is healthy the uh, losses are less technical losses are less uh, the um, frequency of interruptions are much less the 24 by 7 power supply is there to the customer and the rating permits you to connect uh, other equipments without much worries about overloading of the transformer you can use a ester oil for that you can use a copper material for the winding so the upstream side and the, the downstream side can get more concentrated effort of improvement if you are assured that the distribution transformer is robust and healthy some issues like loss control power factor improvement power quality improvement reducing dt failure billing collection everything can start and end on either side of the distribution transformer and uh, energy conservation included so here is uh, something which you have to pay attention and uh, this particular thing the regulators have not enforced uh, to the extent it should have been that this is the point where the institution should start uh, making it uh, recover and become healthier and uh, more money to the capex for dt infrastructure small smart dt metering monitoring of dt load etc all these things the changing of dt winding and establishing of good testing laboratories for dt awfully absent in the states establishing the dt repair net work network and workshop the changing of insulating oils increasing the funds allocated for dt maintenance all these things if uh, they don't need much money but if uh, regulators insist that the distribution companies should pay attention to that that will be nucleus on which the health of the distribution system can be built regulators can bring back the focus on dt uh, they should have their own talent pool instead of uh, every time going to a consultant to do it for them to check the distributors this comes uh, uh, competence in doing things uh, they should have their own think tank they should have their own means of collecting the data and analyzing it they have a intention to intervene but the intention is not big effective because distribution companies have the priorities of attending to things other than answering to regulators so the regulators probably could get a wrong data and draw a wrong conclusion and it remains a paperwork dt level metering billing collection and uh, keeping track of the data analyzing it and system interruptions these are the things the regulators should insist that the distribution companies do it thoroughly before anything like the uh, sop parameters are met or operating conditions are thrust on them i'll go to this in a little later now come to the regulators and the, the regulation part of it we have very fortunate that uh, we have a lot of policy and act uh, already in field we have got a regulator commission act 1998 the energy conservation act 2001 electricity act 2003 national electricity plan 2018 electricity policy national tariff policy and uh, policy on anything you like to mention biogas policy biomass policy micro rural electrification policy i think 
there is no dearth of policies which have been thrust and uh, very beautifully written by eminent engineers, eminent administrators, and eminent uh, persons from judiciary in the regulatory commissions. I was just trying to analyze what kind of priority regulators have today. Main task is tariff order issue and dispute resolution. Half of the time of the regulators today, or maybe more, goes into the issuing of tariff order and the dispute resolution. Uh, uh, reduction in AT and C losses, improving uh, system parameters, data analysis, they get lower priority. And uh, that is why the follow up actions and the monitoring actions are lacking. A uh, lot of paperwork is done, a lot of uh, items which the regulatory commission wants to control, they try their best to control, but then the follow up of that is not always satisfactory. Regulatory mechanism has got a short analysis, if you say the strength and weakness. They have unlimited authority on paper. If one goes through the uh, Electricity Act 2003, the regulators are authorized to do a lot of functions, but they have not done to the extent it is expected. Subsidy reduction has not come below 20%. Least cost planning is not pursued. No seriousness to introduce merit order dispatch. The mechanism only helps in performing a balancing act between the stakeholders. Yeah, they, they, they keep the policy makers like the government pleased. They have reasonable influence on the public and by keeping the tariff under control, they get their blessings. But uh, actually, who suffers is discom, but then discom knows how to handle it because they know that if they don't perform, the government has the back of them to come out of tell them how. Tariff order is based on a, uh, the revenue analysis of the stakeholders and uh, they are not verified by independent data. So years after years, you get a carbon copy of the previous tariff order with minor adjustments, the same kind of annual revenue requirement, same kind of cut on the final thing, same kind of explanation, same kind of questions asked by the people who are reviewing it and finally, a few paise here and there and the tariff order is issued. It's a very drastic remark I am giving, I'm sorry for that, but then a thorough work needs little more exercise to the grassroots level and uh, involvement of parties to come out with a report that uh, looks different, aims differently, and the fund allocation and other things are done in a better way every year. Uh, regulatory commission are not forcing the government agencies to pay their dues, pay their uh, dues regulatory commissions and uh, government offices are the biggest defaulters for paying the discounts. Government policies prevail, such as most run status for solar plant and the burden on discounts because of that, uh, the regulators don't play a role there. The CRCs across the states are not uniform, so some unifying authority like the FOR, uh, Forum of Regulators have to do that. So you have got 30 CRCs working on 30 different ways and somebody has to spend equal number of hours to see that there is a harmonization between them. ACRC's uh, own financial dependency on utility is sometimes uh, responsible for making them soft. Administrative control of ACRC inherits the government blueprint. So because the top man from uh, in regulatory commissions are generally a very eminent person from the government, so the government style of working prevails in uh, regulatory commissions. Reforms. The reforms uh, refer to a course correction by pumping more money into this uh, particular area. We had several problems to start with when distribution guru sector got separated. ATNC losses, modernization of distribution, metering, then SCADA, make electricity reach every house, improving sub-transmission, improving urban power network, reducing cross-subsidy. Hey, as if it looks that nothing was right when distribution got separated, and everything had to be really taken off. So for each one of these targets, there was a reform announced and a lot of money allocated. To the extent that at certain point of time, one has a feeling that uh, probably there are too many reforms. And these reforms, the more they are, the breach of reforms, the non-compliance on the reforms goes higher. The parties uh, are not satisfied with each other's uh, remarks and then they go to the lawyers to settle it. 
and uh, the more you expose yourself that you don't know how to do your job how to do your homework and how to set your house the more you run to the consultants so all these years because of the the forums and disputes and settlements and other things we have been only going to the lawyers and going to the consultants for settlement of our own problems as the reform cycle is typical if you study how the reforms like apdrp rapdrp ddgi and uh, now sohagya and other things have come the year they started uh, it starts with the selection of a problem which needs everybody's attention then appoint a consultant to submit a report a consultant who has nothing to do with the state business or this com business but as a name in the international field can be your consultant and uh, write a report for you announce launching of the funding with all very tall targets fund comes from our finance corporation rural electrification corporation project starts with a elaborate tendering activity implementation lags project from day one development takes place in bits and pieces by the time the project period is over so take that money club it with another a lot of money and uh, go back to step number one this algorithm is going on and then uh, every project which has been taken except so which is claimed that it has actually made 100 percent village electrification and the individual electrification in the housing and others who have been aborted aborted with money transport to something else and the story of it the failure has not been announced except to the project where people admit that it has not been successful regulators have uh, no refund for reform fund and they can't spend money on a pilot project regulators uh, have to make things speedier but they are not the executors regulators uh, take political measures in by masters into competence about uh, measures necessary to take the interest of the sector and uh, periodic impact assessment is never done a lot of meetings and uh, today we are finding certain scenarios changing the long-term open access people are not willing to go for they are going for short-term open access now it will get converted to spot market and uh, real-time power balancing and bilateral contracts learning to adjust to spot market risks is another chance for this comes to uh, probably recover then we have got ancillary services somebody is doing work for you and he will charge you that will be a burden on the industry already the industry tariff is one of the highest the difference between the industry tariff and the domestic tariff in india is much higher than the other countries distributed generation must run status for these distributed generations that is also going to put extra burden on the discounts a quick glance at the different reforms that have improved the sector we are all familiar with APDRP and RAPDRP in the years of 2004-2016. 440 billion rupees. And I remember the USAID group extensively traveled all over India to give training to people. Number of uh, distribution system training institutes got built up during that time. And the uh, infrastructure got started, but not much could be achieved because of lack of availability of good meters. Then focus on village electrification came with RGG BY, Rajiv Gandhi. And when the ministry changed, it got converted to the Dinda Lupa Gramin Jyoti 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 that is uh, continuing with Uday. Uday had 3,240 billion to piece out uh, the discounts from their financial crisis. Many states didn't opt for it. It had a lot of uh, loan component. So now it has been seen that over five years of working of Uday, the loan burden of discounts has increased rather than decreased. The government has sort of admitted that Uday was not very successful. Now they have decided to convert Uday to Aditya. And, uh, Focus is on IT, IoT, prepaid metering, infrastructure. Then I told about Sohagyo, which is a successful mission. Then there's the Kusum, and the list is very long. Overall, the amount of money that has been pumped into the sector is of the order of $7,200 billion, billion rupees. Now, CERC has done some good job. Uh, we have seen that general network access has been uh, there, which is uh, a refinement on the open access. 
the harmonizing of acrcs function through form of regulators so some sensible activities done by crc are making some changes which people have accepted but there are certain changes in act which has been initiated and propagated which has been rejected i will come to that now in all these i have one comment that a uh, lot of jumping targets are there and uh, this has diluted the seriousness of the whole thing now uh, we when 2012 we first heard that the power for all 24 by 7 power by 2012 that was the year 2002 they said 2012 24 by 7 power will be available to everyone now the target has shifted to 2025 50000 hydro addition in 2002 was supposed to be added in 2012 now it has shifted to 2030 100 gigawatt solar by 2022 the new target is 450 gigawatt solar by 2030 136 gigawatt battery storage plant by 2030 nuclear power addition 2000 megawatt by 2030 24% electric vehicle by 2024 these are not very consistent targets you go through different magazines different uh, ministers studying on different uh, forums the targets will shift uh, from in percentage the target will shift in money and targets will shift the year so this uses sanctity the moment to we know that some consultant working on them has given some has given some figures and the political uh, masters uh, they throw the figure to attract the market to invest uh, on these things for the convenience uh, of carrying on with the business so i personally feel that unless there is sanctity and seriousness in projecting these figures then the things will go into dilution and the objective will only satisfy the paper work we have we are hearing some amendments in 2003 electricity act it has been there for too long people now talk of cost reflective tariff this is a issue of power energy society recent issue and american vocabulary a term cost reflective tariff has come and uh, our power ministry has immediately picked it up and told that we want cost reflective tariff then penalty for power cuts recognizing franchisee appointment encouraging it then creating enforcing authority to contract management passing on subsidy directly to the beneficiary this comes to open lc before a sale this is permit scheduling and some relaxation on late payment fee do they really call for an amendment of the act i mean uh, that's what is the question we distribution engineers should uh, these these are things which are expected to be done why should the tariff not be cost reflective who denied it earlier and if there is a cost reflective tariff now intended is there a intention to help somebody now at this stage we know that the distributed generation like solar and uh, wind are making a penetration and a lot of roadways are being made to see that these two technologies are getting welcome uh, in the country in different form but uh, doing it uh, without a proper explanation and without a proper and, and everything getting converted to a amendment really makes people suspicious about the intention of the policy makers now a lot of uh, tamil nadu and west bengal have already rejected it and uh, now i came to know yesterday's paper that the government is rethinking whether this uh, electricity act uh, amendment has to go as such or some amendment to amendment is required okay let's last uh, item is discomes priority and uh, people who are having some sympathy for the distribution companies they would appreciate that uh, lot of reforms and expectations from distribution sector and a lot of money pumped into it has only landed up into embarrassing them because at the grassroots level they are not prepared to accept the high technology that is expected uh, in uh, 2005 6 when i was the director general of cpri we tried amr ami and the pilot projects and other things believe me that time there is not a was supplying quality yes so the sector is over exposed to suggestions and the technology and much more worried that's what the picture shows i got a statement on explain this the unabashed bias towards ultra specialization at the cost of fundamental measures is now a global trend and the distribution sector is suffering because of that 
we will go quickly now in discoms have got a negative branding a loss making organization inefficient corrupt adverse public image they have financial constraint facility constraint functional and organizational constraint empowerment constraint recruitment constraints manpower constraints and uh, they get a lot of money and uh, the attraction is that if you get it as a loan and if you perform in reducing the at and c losses it gets converted to grant so they take the loan they can't reduce the uh, losses to the extent expected and it gets converted to it doesn't get converted to grant so it becomes a loan model and then this story goes on of course i agree that a lot of capital pumped into the sector is making it uh, floating otherwise it would have drowned long back but then it is required now to see that whether there is something basically fundamentally wrong in structuring the tariff in structuring the implementation of the projects or in structuring the right kind of uh, mechanism or management that we have given to distribution company is it right time to give it to the private companies who we can manage it better very little structural change in last 25 years same circle division section and employees the section officer does everything his time goes into answering the questions from division circle and from the regulatory commission from the ministry from, and uh, it is only the question is the people in the headquarter become uh, in large numbers because they have to handle so many uh, projects so many tendering so many capex in the some of them are thrust by the central government some of them are their own government and uh, each project needs some kind of manpower so the headquarter becomes top heavy and the grassroots level this field level the population is so thin that they can't do justice to their day to day work noticeable progress has taken place we have uh, electrified all the houses i think we can claim that 26.6 million houses uh electrified in 16 months was kind of a world record and if it is true that every house has been electrified india should get the credit for that energy efficiency improvement star marking transformers are being pushed some sensitization to power quality has been achieved prompting distribution generation smart grid work has started we are busy with electricity vehicle policy solar policy solar park policy deviation settlement mechanisms and the national power system fund general open access while all these things are done to facilitate recovery of a sector the implementation part of it and the, the expectation part of it has to be looked into by the policy makers a little more thoroughly i personally feel that uh, multiple level control today is a drawback it should be changed to private control private control will bring a lot more ownership today distribution sector is suffering because no one is a owner there and human intervention should be changed so as much as possible automation should come into it dependence on grid should be diluted decentralized generation rooftop solar should come in a big way obsolete technology should be replaced by it iot data analysis employee frustration must be replaced by trust and empowerment the rigid tariff structure should be made flexible and cost reflective rampant outsourcing should be checked and the restricted outsourcing should be done supply monopoly should be removed and uh, encourage competition customer satisfaction should be changed to customer delight technology should be infused in a very fast speed today we are lucky we have the technology and uh, it can come but then in a very structured way on a priority basis i don't say that each feeder needs uh, higher technology each distribution transformer needs a higher it should be reliability based and it should be customer based if i paying capacity of the customer is a big issue there is no need according to me that the tariff should be uniform for uh, the poorest man in the village to the richest man in the urban area uh, there should be some classification of his requirement of power and the his paying capacity and uh, if it needs high reliable power and uh, at any cost provide it with all technology infused into it but aiming to provide reliable power with high technology to the to everyone in the whole uh, length and breadth of the distribution sector is an attempt which will never succeed so a flexible tariff structure 
and the need based tariff structure and uh, is to be uh, implemented and uh, 24 by 7 supply and other things should be not so much repeated i will complete my talk in about 5 7 minutes uh, please bear with me then second, uh, high priority area according to me is not uh, uh, sir, sir yeah manas uh, Mr. Patanai, can you put yourself on mute? Uh, Professor Tripathi, please continue. Okay. Uh, okay, we will bring every user into billing fold, which we have not been doing in the last 70 years. And uh, remove illegal connections, uh, deployment and control of field stuff, put the right man in the right place in the field. Prepaid smart metering is absolute must. Adherence to standard operating parameters, data analysis and feedback, audit and uh, assess on a uh, online basis, that is the real time basis. I am shocked to see in some uh, electricity boards and this comes, audit is being done for asset uh, five years behind and uh, the audit for last year is not in complete at the end of this year. So these things really don't make sense. The audit has to be done. The account has to be closed on the same day. Audit has to be completed at the end of the month within a week. If that is not happening, then there is a enough long rope we are giving to people to do some corrupt practices and your ledgers will never match and you can never recover from the system. Condition-based maintenance is uh, in pen and paper, but it is not really practiced. Okay, we have should have a distribution system operator to get the kind of a uh, hold on the or a grip on the problem areas in the distribution system. Multiple payment options should be there. Make it easy for the people to pay. Increase visibility. You are selling a commodity, so you have to market it. So you have to market the more the people consume, the concessions should be available instead of a penalty. Phasing out outdated equipment and replacing them by modern equipments and the dynamic custom care. It's called customer engagement. Now today, the discounts have become a punch bag for anything that goes wrong. As a policy privatization was supposed to deliver, but the privatization was never really privatization in the true sense of it. You have all the controls for fixing the tariff, you have all the controls for making the acts and the rules and the policies, and you say the discount supplies to deliver by seven quality power at 15% TNT. If they are not doing their not to the optimal. Where from he gets money for the capex? Where from he gets money for uh, having this CADA centers and other things? If he is not making his base cost of power purchase same as his annual recovery or annual recovery is not more than the base cost of purchase, where is the cash for doing all these things? So some more thinking has to be done into this. A food for thought. More than 7,500 billion in reforms have gone into the discounts. Metering, billing, and collection still primitive. Customer engagement has not happened. No real clue to solve theft and corruption. And uh, changes happening are region. Can we simplify thing? Can we simplify by adopting a one nation, one tariff? The time may come that it should be practiced because 70 years back, one state had more hydro than thermal and he has invested on that. And now why should he not uh, take advantage of it after 70 years? by paying 10 paisa less because hydro is cheaper. Uh, these arguments don't stand any longer. Pan India implementation of uh, science and technology will be the answer to the future improvement in the discounts. Uniformly apply the same rule to all and improve them. A little bit of extra tariff on advantaged uh, states will not cost the public. People are not really afraid of paying a little more, but they want reliable interest-free supply. And if you are doing it for petrol, if you are doing it for uh, diesel, a rolling price depending on the cost, then why not for electricity? And uh, this is one thing where, after all, the whole spread of cost is between five rupees seventy paise to eight rupees in the whole country, and uh, it will be settled somewhere in between, and it will be dynamic, like what you spent last month you reflect in this month's tariff on a rolling basis. These things with the digitalization and other things are very much a possibility and I am a strong supporter of that. What I recommend is that uh, open access in distribution should be a, in true sense. 
if you want the industries to come in large numbers, if you want uninterrupted power supply to industry, the industrial tariffs should go down. And uh, open access has to be given in true sense without bothering much about the boiling charge and the, the fixed assets and other things going deep into calculations. DT for feeder based profit center concepts has to start. If each DT brings some amount of profit to the electricity utility, then the whole sector will have a profitability. This is only possible if the private company takes up the ownership, introduces modernization, takes it as a business model, works for it, and gets the result out of it. Asset management philosophy adopted and pursued. A pan India cost reflective tariff based on service reliability and paying capacity of consumers. Encouraging distributed generation, solar rooftops, autonomous microgrid will continue. Lowering the level of the industrial tariff, I said already. Encourage the consumption, no ceiling on maximum demand. We have surplus generation. If you are keeping track of the total installed capacity in India and the present load, the gap is uh, something like 360,000 megawatt to 165. We have surplus power. Plants are running at low plant load factor because there is no load. Transmission lines have been built, but generation at the ends are not yet ready. So they are going to charge stagnation transmission lines, stagnation charges. There is a mismatch, and there will be a mismatch. Uh, so not we should see that uh, that uh, we should encourage uh, drawal of power. The more somebody draws, and uh, more it is measured, and the more money he is ready to pay, there is no point in denying that to him. If that signal goes, then people will come for startups, they will come for industries, they will come for uh, commercialists. The moment you draw money, draw power from the discoms, and, and then you don't have your captive power plant, if you find that uh, you are a victim of rules and acts and you are made to pay on your part, but when you sell power, you sell at the grid rate, then the motivation for generation and giving it to the grid that the public benefit disappears. Privatization with a win-win business model is what is required. Conclusion, I would say that uh, power quality can be relooked. Quality power, as I said sometimes back, if you concentrate on technical losses rather than AT and C losses, a uh, lot of things will improve. ATC losses were actually created. I, I remember I was a part of it when uh, things were started, and uh, CPRI was attending those meetings and all that. This is this is a poor excuse to see that a lot of inefficiencies are hidden in it. I mean, anything that is uh, not uh, being recovered is called AT and C losses, and you want to reduce it. This is a very uh, that time it was okay because there was no better tool to do it. Now with a lot of automation available, you can exactly determine what is the technical loss. If the technical loss starts reducing, your attention will go to reduce it by putting something like voltage bar equipments, reactive power equipments, going to the people's house, improving the things. And automatically, your attention will go to where the theft is taking place. Improve technical loss to the best of capability, and commercial losses will reduce automatically because people will see that you are under watch and uh, people are visiting you, people are improving things, people are drawing cables, people are drawing gas insulated stations. And they, in North Korea and uh, in Japan and other things, they don't bother about commercial losses. And it doesn't take place because the vigilance in uh, those countries are so good. The technical loss evaluation is so perfect that people don't dare to do anything which leads to commercial loss. Moreover, it is uh, it will lead to better accounting and better auditing. So my advice would be that at and loss concept, which was introduced 60 years back or 50 years back, let's say, or long, maybe 25 years back, has lost its meaning and is being given as an excuse for denying facilities to the discounts and should be uh, done with. The better term is reduce the technical loss and monitor it. Quality improvement improves the customer satisfaction and trust. And once the customer is satisfied, uh, he would not mind paying another 20 paise towards the bill. But he is uh, demanding attention. And uh, he, the more you attend, the more you talk to him on mobile, the more you bring him on your screen and a dashboard, the more you interact with him, his interaction with you will make him pay for the 
the electricity bill, which is a fraction of what he is paying for other expenses in his house. Discounts must be helped to turn around. There is no question about it. And uh, after all, at the end, uh, what is needed is a political will. Wherever there was a political will in anything, it has happened. Solar wind is an example. The solar scheme is an example. Wherever the ministers wanted, prime minister wanted, the targets were fixed, the center got it done. Center got it done by using its own arms. Our grid did distribution work, hydro work, NTPC did hydro work and distribution work. And they all came to one platform to help the states to bring the target. Otherwise, it would not have been possible. So central government control with political will needs to be welcomed by the states and should not be taken as an interference into their uh, freedom. Electricity is a concurrent subject, agreed. But then concurrent till particular number of years was OK, justified. But now it should be a pan-India effort, pan-India approach, and pan-India success. With this, I conclude my talk and hand over the screen to organizers. Uh, thank you, sir. I think uh, each one of us uh, who are attending uh, this uh, probably has seen or heard some revolutionary thoughts, I would say. It is not that many of us do not recognize, especially at the upper level of policy making. But as you rightly pointed out, uh, we tend to ignore and we are busy in day to day firefighting that sometimes we lose the sight of the wood for the tree. Having said that, I think I will take the responsibility of sharing varieties of questions, which are quite of them are quite interesting. And that shows the eagerness of the participants to interact and learn a little more so that they can probably be the messenger of these takeaways uh, in future to make change. So the first question, uh, which is basically the participant is asking, uh, sir, you to comment. Uh, it is in the context of the power minister's recent declaration that the per capita consumption will be increased by three times. How will the distribution sector cope up? What is your view on this? Could you oh, get me, sir? Per capita, per capita consumption was very, very low earlier, of the order of 600 and 700, with a lot of uh, load increase and generation increase. Uh, it has increased to about 1180 and now up to 1400. Three times, uh, I'm not very sure whether it has, they have been declared that it is 1800 and other things. No. no, but the, the discounts will be under pressure. Discounts will be under pressure if the statistics is true. And uh, because uh, now it is not only surfaced as a scheduling problem for discounts to predict the load. It is not supported by forecasting, not supported by the customer behavior and the industrial growth. And we know that uh, discounts are not able to give their requirement uh, day ahead. And uh, the prediction will go astray. On the, over, on the pace of it, uh, most of them will be solar and generation added and DGs, which are uh, good for peak load requirement and uh, daytime requirement, but not available at the night. Scheduling becomes still difficult. If there is wind added to it, the forecasting becomes still difficult. So if the discounts and wind and solar have to all work within a framework uh, to satisfy the customer, and the customer has really three times uh, per capita consumption, it will be a difficult time unless we really uh, use uh, the modern technologies or modern tools to sort out it. I think research are going on on this R&D work and the academic institutes are seized with this kind of a predict prediction. Uh, discounts also should change and discounts also should try to see if uh, 
as we say that the content and carriage concept is coming up there may be a time when you can't manage with the one network and multiple suppliers and you can't have less than multiple suppliers because competition will vanish monopoly will start so you have to have network on somebody's custody and you have to have managed the business so we expect that the discom will have appropriate changes incorporated and structuring and management to cope up with uh, three times uh, the demand uh, per capita consumption if it comes yeah i think you can add some answer so, so thank you i think uh, you have touched uh, very quickly on to the carriage and content separation uh, what in your view uh, will be the benefit of carriage and separation in distribution business in india uh, because there is a lot of fear the moment the carriage and content separation then the public sector discounts they feel that it is going to be privatized and it's going to be uh, the threat uh, uh, what is your view i i think there are both uh, advantages and disadvantages in other countries where the utilities are private and industries are all mostly 90 95% private another private company handling the network is easy to handle because they public there is accustomed to private operation control and uh, private operators are professionals uh, i in india we don't have uh, that kind of professionalism and professional understanding to tolerate each other if anything goes wrong so today somehow they, we are able to tell that this comes to the supply and that is final but uh, tomorrow if there is a network manager which is private if there is a supply and multiple supplies then if it is not properly coordinated with a dso type of operation distribution system operator with good uh, management control and uh, everybody agreeing to his professional excellency then things may go really wrong that uh, you you deny power to your network unless some x amount of money is paid to you and uh, the supplier thinks that i will prefer a particular route and he is not giving me so i should go to court and file a case so on this bit of uh, Uh, professionalism not being developed to the extent to manage i would not go to jump for uh, carriage and content separation immediately it should be properly planned and when dgs are in sufficient numbers and uh, network is sufficiently strengthened and made reliable alternate route available it is available we should wait till the technology takes you there and then go for the carriage and content oh, thank you sir Uh, in this context i think this is an interesting uh, again uh, uh, somebody is seeking your opinion that uh, do you feel uh, that take over by tata power of sesu uh, shall remove the constraints faced by the current discom to some extent yes because a new management will introduce and try to introduce certain new ideas and uh, the good people in the discoms who are impatient with this classical way of doing things and wanted some change in management to be more active will welcome it they are capable knowledgeable and only thing probably are not empowered to the carry the things the way they wanted so those segment of people who are really eager to improve and not getting enough management support to do it will encourage and support it and that will be a good thing to do but some people who are accustomed to certain way of looking at things and uh, and uh, are referring to continuous status quo for them it will be a real challenge and uh, yes changes will come changes, but i don't think a miracle will happen miracle didn't happen when reliance was there and a miracle didn't happen even when uh, some franchise was given to some people in sesu and it can't happen unless the company uh gets a good support from the core group and the policy makers uh yes i think if the private companies as i mentioned some time back if they are allowed to work the way they would like to manage this so things would have been better but one thing private companies also know that they are there in the business to make some profit and after some time when the uh, lower cherries are picked up and they show some results there could be a status quo before achieving anything bigger it happened with reliance also and uh, so tatas are better they have got a more practical approach to things uh, they uh, from the 
uh, corporate uh, responsibility to public and other things they are known to have the same empathy with this stuff so i expect things will only change for better and i expect also that having given tata as a 25 years old lease and a target which is comparatively uh, easy to achieve uh, all efforts by the policy makers and the, the regulators should be done to see that they, they not only meet the requirement or expected out of them but they uh, take uh, the odisha discounts uh, to a very high level i mean as a kind of a benchmark for the country thank you uh, uh, here again uh, context to your uh, one of the presentation points uh, that uh, target for power for all by 2025 which is a basically shifting target when you talked about it uh, on various schemes uh, and uh, policies uh, policy driven uh, mechanism so uh, why is the target for power for all by 2025 when the sector is stated to be in surplus now well uh, that's a point i also hinted at i think you have surplus of power you are running uh, at plants at low plant load factor people are ready to buy power uh, in a competitive market and a uh, lot of solar and wind power is available now at cheaper rate then uh, why why 25 it is shifting to 25 because it is a uh, uh, it is a apprehension in the mind of people that uh, uh, the um, uh, if it is achieved if they say that it is achieved and uh, no more a topic discussion on that then they lose one important point on which they have got a public leverage or got a sympathy from the public uh, who are knowing only by going by the statistic it's too harsh okay. to tell but what i say is it, it has become a habit with uh, the policy makers to keep a shifting target uh, telling uh, the masses to the people that they are for their good and they are trying their best i personally feel 24 by 7 power supply is not to be ham hammered around uh, nobody other than india does it in the whole world 24 by 7 has lost its meaning. It is not required. I mean, uh, if you are having 10 interruptions in a day in my house, I get at least five or six interruptions a day. And uh, then the moment the, there is a uh, interruption, I look at the window and uh, I see wind blowing. So before the wind even does any damage, the power is cut, or cut down. So concentrate on more important things of uh, customer satisfaction and, and then without promising that it is 24 hours. Today in rural areas, four hours to six hours power cut is very common and uh, the urban people will get a false satisfaction but then things are improving so they keep quiet and the equipments have been already manufactured with a lot of voltage tolerance this that the money has already gone into the pockets of the people so there's nothing much to worry on those aspects things are improving power factors have improved voltage is good so it is only the question of uh, and giving a promise and uh, too many promises also as, you, as i said it dilutes the whole thing people don't take it seriously okay in this uh, current situation uh, what sop is realistically achievable in uh, discounts in india sop is standard of performance yeah, standard uh, of performance uh, yes i think um, uh, it's a very interesting question i think first thing uh, a lot of uh, regulatory commissions have tried to impose calculations of SOPs and uh, keeping kind of a benchmark. I had the good luck of uh, going into details of the SOPs of various states. Uh, recently, I got uh, the forum of regulators uh, fixing some kind of a criteria that it is three minutes to 100 minutes. Uh, the side D, side D duration can be for very advanced days, three minutes in a month. and uh, 100 minutes is the limit and the sci fee is between uh, 5 and 25 something like that. so uh, if you compare it with uh, countries like norway sweden and all that they have got uh, 29 minutes in a year we talk of 100 minutes in a month but even 100 minutes in a month is a very big achievement because the uh, sop for the current uh, discounts is of the order of 400 minutes uh, maybe a couple of hours and all that so the state at which we are today is so bad that any improvement on that, that will be welcome. And the second thing I wanted to point out, who is giving the correct data? You don't have automation equipment. So you don't have a feeder, feeder meters you have got, but a DT meters you don't have got. So interruption time recording, the people are aware that what the norms are, and they always enter into the logbook a time 
which is less than what is fixed by the regulatory commission. Temporary, they know temporary interruption is five minutes. So they say that it was uh, four minutes, uh, 30 minutes, so it doesn't get counted as one. So if you have uh, your intentions known to the people and they have their compulsions not to meet it and the public is not aware of either, then the SOP exercise without automation, without independent data recording and without the third party calculating is only meeting some kind of a cosmetic requirement. So what I say that uh, for a month, the um, frequency system average interruption frequency, uh, let's say two times a day. So 60 is a number which should be attempted first. If you cross that, it should be 30, it should be cross that 20, but the range is between uh, 10 and 60. And uh, system duration is uh, maybe, uh, let us say, start with five minutes a day with, a, let us say, 300 minutes in a month, but you improve it, it can come to 100. But the regulatory commissions have, um, that it should not be, it can be, the best can be three minutes. So it's very ideal to have a three minute interruption in a month. So what I gather, if the denominator is tending towards zero, Whatever improvement you are doing, it will be tending towards infinity. So consumer surplus <laughs> and the satisfaction of the customer will be there. So there is an yes. interesting question with the same uh, thing. Are penalties being collected for not meeting SOP guidelines? But to my knowledge, uh, not even a token money is collected. The papers are uh, prepared in such a way that uh, you <laughs> you don't get a uh, uh, i will give an example and the government intended to uh, open a site and uh, tell discounts that if you have got a planned shut, shut down you announce it well before time and uh, if you have announced it and there is an interruption then uh, the, it will not be counted for the sop calculations and uh, to our surprise after surprise everybody started uh, telling some 20 30 interruptions in a day as a planned interruption so after that, after they have done it openly in the public portal, you can't say that uh, this, so all of them were maintenance requirements. I mean, 20 times I will interrupt because I am doing a very thorough maintenance. Now do whatever you like. So this kind of thing, resistance to law and resistance to implementation of quality norms is in the public mind and they are much smarter than the policy implementers. So it, something has to be done to automate them and something has to be done to collect data real time, real time, independent and a third party to looking at a continuous watch on that. Then you get the right information, otherwise you don't get the right information. So I don't, I'm not aware of a penalty being charged for evasions. Maybe. I think maybe many of our, many of our reliability, yeah, yes. I think many of our reliability indices to start with, uh, has to be automated uh, given the kind of uh, ages we are already in as far as meeting technology is concerned and IT infrastructure is concerned. So instead of human intervention and human interpretation over Excel sheet, uh, we should have the regulator uh, specifying and providing for uh, without any human intervention how to get the online indexes basis of data so uh, thank you sir uh, uh, i have another question uh, what does cost reflective tariff mean yes uh, cost reflective tariff this is a new term and uh, again you see as i said the ieee magazine uh, this month uh, it has come and a very nice article is there uh, what, what they say is that uh, the utility is supplying, uh, giving power to people and the load uh, profile of uh, clients are not same. Somebody is uh, drawing peak uh, and then uh, low peak and uh, fluctuating load. And for the peak demand of each, the utility is uh, borrowing money or borrowing power, paying more for the tariff. And somebody who is a domestic customer is uniformly drawing some small power. And uh, so, uh, the cost to the utility is not getting reflected on the tariff. It, when you say cost reflective tariff, it means the cost to the utility for meeting uh, indisciplined loads, uh, high HT loads, fluctuating loads is not getting reflected in the tariff structure. So it is uh, in a way that you charge him more who is uh, having a lot of fluctuations in the demands and the utility is uh, 
borrowing power during that time or making some extra effort to meet that requirement uh, it is it, it has two reasons so government is thinking of it because they say that okay that fellow will be motivated to put dg and solar to even out its peaks uh, or some arrangement or we will charge him indicating that he is costing us more so that we have to pay but that extra money what he pays will go as a kind of cross subsidy for the people who are maintaining a uniform load so i don't know I mean, again uh, to implement it it will be something like uh, putting it to, to the uh, mechanism of the things to tell the customer that uh, without understanding his physical manufacturing requirement and the compulsions to tell that because you are polluting the water i will kill you like the boat and tiger story the boat was uh, drinking water at the lower level and the tiger was at the upper level and then he told you i will eat you the goat said that i am not polluting your water he told even then i will eat you because i am the tiger and you are the boat so okay that's interesting sir i mean we can't help it right the intention is not uh, bad or good, but it is something which is missing, and some intelligent brain is thinking that why not charge a little more? Why not charge a reliability charge on the captive power plants? It's something similar to that. Okay. <laughs> Sir, uh, very another uh, interesting Manasi. thing. Uh, hello. Uh, uh, I just, Manasi, uh, uh, yeah. Ajay, you are joined? Uh, okay, yeah, up. actually, I am joined. <laughs> uh, Hello. Uh, I will finish up with few questions, uh, yes. and then uh, you take it from there. Uh, there is one interesting question, sir. Uh, why CTU function is being contemplated to be taken away from PGCIL? In fact, if electricity act uh, provisions are seen uh, in STU and CTU, uh, which is like distribution system operator or transmission system operator, they are supposed mm -hmm. to be independent and neutral. Uh, and they are supposed to be governed by straightforward the ERCs, either CERC or ACERC. Uh, and that has not happened because of the structural issues, uh, because they were dependent uh, on to the state uh, for their human resource, for their financial resource. But today uh, we are seeing uh, that there is a uh, discussion going on uh, that CTU function to be taken away from PGCIL and automatic corollary later on will be uh, the STU function will be taken away uh, from the respective state uh, uh, transmission utilities uh, or SLDCs uh, rather. Uh, so uh, why it is being contemplated at all? Uh, if uh, we ourselves have not allowed them to uh, uh, the level playing field or the uh, philosophy as per the electricity act in the first place yeah uh, true uh, see at one point of time government itself had decided that uh, the transmission uh, can be transmission licensee can be one and uh, transmission uh, leasing and other things or uh, trading authority can, need not be privatized and uh, but then it couldn't manage i mean uh, lot of transmission operators have come and uh, uh, for example Adani, Tata and all they are now independent transmission operators so probably it is their pressure that they want that uh, we can't uh, be competing with uh, our uh, PGCIL voting for the same project and the decision will be taken by power grid who is the winner of the bid. so power grid having two roles one is uh, uh, as a CTU uh, having the authority on the transmission and then becoming a player in bidding for a competitive bidding for it where the private uh, transmission operators are also playing a bid can create to some confusion it is the same thing like uh, when the Kosovo was uh, taken out somebody told that the system operation is a different issue and uh, the man who is providing the transmission links are the central transmission unit cannot sit over the operation control aspects and then they will have a Kind of a um, bias uh, towards uh, favoring the transmission. So I understand because they want to encourage more and more people coming into the transmission field, and it is also becoming inevitable because uh, suppose you have got uh, solar park now, two solar parks are coming out, 2,400 megawatt, one in Karnataka and one in Rajasthan. Uh, people who are investing money from private, they would like to have their transmission line drawn and uh, capitalize on the control of the whole thing. So if they are doing the transmission uh, line and there is a bid, 
they would quote and somebody else will quote and somebody else who is quoting is the controlling authority of uh, also deciding who will take it it will create the confusion so probably uh, my feeling is that the government is trying to separate it out because more and more such uh, confusions and problems could come and uh, if you ask me whether it is the right thing to do it uh, um, it is uh, difficult to answer because uh, things are uh, under any way the CERC and others could have looked over the sanctity and the clarity and transparency the whole thing but it is something new maybe a consultant has ever devised it. So I have one interesting uh, question from one of our earlier uh, expert speaker Mr. Jamloki. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably you will recall, uh, uh, he was the uh, expert speaker in our one of the last session. Uh, his views are very interesting. The regulators are exerting all pressures on discoms, but not mm -hmm. on the government for ensuring empowerment and their responsibility. The regulatory bodies mm -hmm. are working like government policy implementer. Do you think yes. the reform of the regulatory agency is required? Yeah, I, I, if you have read uh, what uh, Mr. R.V. Sahi in his lecture has given uh, this month, 10 days back, he has exactly pointed out this thing, that the intention of uh, forming the regulatory commissions and putting one of the administrators uh, with a rich experience in government as the head is that, was that, that the government's intentions must be carried out uh, uh, in uh, serving the public. Uh, but the selection of those people whether there will be an engineering member with a judiciary member or a finance member and other things they were also very specifically mentioned in the electricity act but then people found it inconvenient uh, to adjust to the uh, government uh, supremacy uh, because it uh, think of a simple case you increase the tariff by 25 paise and uh, within five days there is a revolt in the unions and other things you roll it back by 10 paise what is the sanctity in that? Why should the regulator roll it back? But it has been done. And this kind of thing is unavoidable because uh, after all, you are paid and your salary comes from somebody. So salary is paid by discoms or the general gen codes and other things or by rotation or by proportionate arrangement. The building you see it is governance building. And uh, so uh, all, all these things uh, kind of make the uh, regulators soft towards uh, government. After the appointment itself is done by the government uh, for the man, that is what uh, probably will undergo a change. I think uh, the government is seriously thinking as to there is an amendment to that which has been proposed as to how to see that uh, the regulators become independent of the government influence. That is why the power minister has also told that there should be more authoritative and the discount should be more free from political influence. It is, I don't blame the politicians because they. Politicians, uh, I'm sorry, government, the government has also to have some, uh, you want to please some political masters and uh, they are under compulsions, so they pass on the compulsions to the regulators and so it is an arrangement which the national level uh, reform is required. I mean, it cannot be easily uh, taken out from the system once it has prevailed for such a long time. Right, sir. Thank you. I hand over to uh, Mr. Patanayak for taking it forward. Uh, we have uh, a few more minutes and uh, there are quite a few questions. Uh, so, Mr. Patanayak, please uh, take it over. Mr. Patanayak? Mr. Patanayak? Uh, namaskar. Are you uh, is it audible right now? Yes. Audible, but we are not on the screen. Oh, actually, I couldn't join today because of my laptop didn't work properly. That's why I am working from uh, my mobile. Okay, okay, okay. Go ahead. Uh, okay, sir. Actually, the very uh, pertinent question I'm asking related to uh, something like quality power and quantity power. So, which tagline uh, to be considered uh, the best for Indian context at present practice? For some years, it was quantity. I, I agree that for the first 30, 35 years or something, it, it had to be quantity because basic minimum requirement of electricity should be supplied first. After that, uh, the switch over should have been to quality because uh, uh, the quality then dictates uh, the satisfaction level of the people and the success of uh, power to the industries, consumers and other things. And quality would have brought quantity. Demand would have increased. Uh, 
quantitude of com automatically but uh, quantity emphasis went on for a very long time and uh, the system uh, became so complicated uh, by not insisting on quality at the right time that it was very difficult to revert it uh, at the time when we wanted quality badly so now uh, quality power really requires a lot of infrastructural changes and uh, redoing things and other things so a compromise has been made as to have a manageable quality and uh, for example they as i mentioned about the power quality norms and the level of interruptions and level of uh, supply and uh, more on the harmonics and the year with coming with the electronic load and other things uh, because the grid is very big and uh, integrated uh, these kind of things are not surfacing to very alarming level and if they are bring any damage to the equipment and other things that is also not being uh, noticed because uh, uh, no data is kept on that no data nobody goes to the court for losing his fridge in india culture we don't encourage that or don't do that had it been getting done if a patient is dying in a hospital because of electricity or bad quality of electricity and the insurance companies use the our hospital is getting a million dollar from the it is should have automatically come quality is not being uh, insisted yeah. because of lack of knowledge because people getting educated and uh, insurance companies taking over and uh, fear of not supplying power getting into the heart of the suppliers should bring quality it should automatically come but it is not coming because it is costly it will have an impact on the tariff increase the public may resent and uh, not, i don't say that is the good thing but as engineers uh, we should insist that with a development of the right kind of equipment digital agents and other things it is possible to give quality without asking so when you are building yeah, a new substation it should have uh, the quality you should have it. so anything you are doing new make it a role model for quality so in a way when we go on replacing the old things by new things will improve what uh, uh, as i said quality can ensure quantity but quantity can never ensure quality that is that is a motto yeah, absolutely right they that yeah. uh, Attack it at the grassroots level. Don't allow. They call it a zero defect uh, design, zero defect implementation. So we must have that in our personal character to see that uh, we do things with zero defect. Yeah, sir. One more question. Actually, uh, in your in your recommendation, it was uh, something like no ceiling on maximum demand. Uh, but could it be possible to get implemented for the state where uh, scarcity of power is there? very much very much possible i think uh, if you see that uh, maximum demand penalty uh, is a very primitive thing according to me when you have power when you can supply power and you are uh, not having cash you want to sell power to collect uh, money for the systems somebody has taken a 5 kilowatt connection and this cable has been uh, dated for 8 kilowatt and he draws 6 kilowatt and you penalize him it is a very derogative uh, kind of way of working I think encourage uh, higher demand uh, up to 10 percent, 15 percent, and if he is paying for that, what is the problem? And if somebody wants five kilowatt load and wants to pay for the cable he is drawing, and in future he wants to draw and pay for the money, it should increase. We, we today we want uh, demand to increase. Uh, it is alarming today the demand remains in India around 165 to 195 megawatt thousand, 1 to 95,000 megawatt with a generation of uh, 368,000 megawatt. I think uh, either uh, the generators are on paper and generation is on paper and the load is uh, actual, or we are not really interested in keeping account of the power which is not being utilized. That is a loss. So one hand we are bothered about AT and C losses going from one percent to ten by going up and down by five percent. The other way we don't care what kind of a capital blocking we are doing by not running. Uh, uh, thermal power plants are running at low PLF and not encouraging industries to come up and increase the demand and penalizing for drive. So a relook has to be made if there is no fear of congestion in a line or no fear of uh, the voltage and uh, quality norms or frequency norms getting deviated, demand should be encouraged to increase. So uh, 
simple study will tell us that uh, this line can be loaded up to that and you say that if you load up to the maximum that it can be loaded you get a rebate on the money on the contrary i find yeah. uh, that uh, the power grid and others sometimes they put a restriction on trunk lines not carrying on 500 only in anticipation of congestion and then they say that we have solved yeah. india's power everywhere else other than india the lines are carrying uh, 30 to 40 percent power more than what we are allowing in india and i know the margins are available where more power can work. so if somebody draws more power and uh, some some industry let's say 100 megawatt he wants and the grid is giving him at the lean time cheaper power uh, up to 50 megawatt what he wants and he has committed 33 megawatt drive he's paying for the 17 megawatt uh, which I, according to me, should not pay in, because power is available, it is uh, odd, peak, uh, but there is a commitment asked from him that, and if you, so on the contrary, this man who is not allowed to draw more than 50, when he is asked to pay, pay or he has to uh, give power to the grid, he tells us, I don't have power. I will rather keep my power plant uh, short rather than giving it to you. So it's a give and take. So, um, but now, uh, when, uh, I don't say that indiscriminately allow people to draw, but I say that uh, look at the features and permit promote a discount uh, power if somebody is drawing power and paying for it. I think sir, uh, one, uh, uh, yeah, I'm Manas here. Uh, I think sir, uh, yeah, that's, an interesting, that's an interesting view. Uh, so uh, essentially uh, what uh, is happening during last three months the industries have gone into uh, less than 50 percent of production mode so they are not in any case uh, in a position to uh, i mean uh, jump over the maximum demand what they have contracted and uh, mm -hmm. residential uh, customers do not have that uh, within their system uh, to go for a larger consumption so we are seeing 50 percent but you are absolutely right that unless we are in preparedness uh, to give power and power is such an element that it also uh, generates the demand for more power uh, the yes. more you provide for uh, the more demand gets generated and if our industries are able to quickly uh, pick up uh, to the original level and go beyond that level, then such kind of tariff uh, mechanism uh, will make it right and appropriate uh, that what we are talking about, uh, that we can take our place under the sun. One uh, last question, I think we are uh, coming very close. Uh, the system will close ourselves. Uh, uh, the interesting uh, view actually uh, is that academics have not been involved into the regulatory process uh, right from the beginning over a period of time. And that is where uh, uh, some of these things which is not happening, like uh, our participation of Indian power sector into SIGRE uh, and DISCOMs do not benchmarking of power supply like in European Union or ASEAN countries and this is going on in asia for last 15 years but if there is academic and regulatory confluence uh, like what we see in california commission energy commission and such places uh, probably uh, our regulators will be much more strengthened uh, to uh, discharge their uh, responsibility uh, and uh, make uh, the distribution uh, sector more viable so uh, this is what is uh, the expression uh, what i see uh, probably um, also uh, encouraged with your presence uh, because you are also in academic line after having served the industry for a long so any view kindly and that, this is the last question uh, after that we'll winding up yeah manas i think the interesting question uh, see um, what i find other countries uh, the industry and the utility they demand certain things on which the academic institutes work with funding from them so there is a sort of money available with the utility and the government and the regulators to experiment around and tell academic institutes that can we make a meter for me of this specification can i get this thing automated so the people work on that and they come out with a product come out with a theory algorithm and other things 
in india there is no such demand from either the regulator or industry and to make something developed indigenously uh, by the makers of india and uh, the supporting r and d to be done by the academic institutes i don't blame academic institutes they are going on very hypothetical uh, research work and uh, very advanced research work if you see we have uh, worked so much on microgrid so many papers are getting published uh, adaptive control mr patnaik knows very high standard papers are being published which are being consumed by somebody else means utilized by the american people or chinese people and uh, unfortunately the uh, kind of pressure that, that regulatory mechanism should have on that that uh, we want something to be done uh, in india at least some specific areas and the r and d should be given to the academic institute to do it is not there i mean pmu is an example pmu pmu related uh, research what is being done at kanpur iit or pa are all for consumption of uh, smart grid people in usa and other countries <coughs> commensurate data generation and commensurate uh, data transport to the r&d people in academics and other things are not happening so there is a disjoint uh, between the priorities given by the r&d and the academics i think patnaik knows we have been talking with him for quite some time how to bridge this gap give a problem i mean if, so uh, first thing the certain amount of money should be earmarked that it has to be spent on r&d by the academic institute some uh, prototype or some patenting something should be encouraged by the by either say 2% of the fund i want to ask patnaik himself optcl how much money they are ready to give to academic institute to develop a product if he can then things will change otherwise it will not change so brain yeah, brain of course r and d the the institute people uh, they want their phd they want their uh, degree and other things they are doing lots of papers publishing lot of papers which have probably no commercial value and they will be highly pleased if somebody funds them good uh, mr patna you were saying something please yeah yeah it's absolutely correct uh, actually uh, dr tripathi what he is speaking that is absolutely correct and it is need of the hour to go for the bridging the gap and especially uh, as per uh, my state is concern it is not it is having a i mean say very good uh, uh, gap is there disjoint is there uh, hope so we can do something and uh, by the way uh, sari is from my state definitely of uh, meeting together and to come forward uh, as far opd cell is concerned there is a lot of sense in between these dates because uh, uh, some of uh, higher officials have uh, joined to us so hope so we can go for a change yeah that is that is talking about the general ecosystem and the general ecosystem if it does not change our orientation our brain drain in some other form will continue will be working here in india and produce world class thoughts and products to be consumed uh, by the developed world and it will never be recognized in india so that's with those uh, few things and thoughts i must take uh, this opportunity to thank sir once again on behalf of the participants and on behalf of myself and mr patnaik and p manifold ica and spark group uh, it has been a wonderful uh, experience and a deep thought sharing Uh, generally we shy in talking about the regulatory reforms uh, though we feel that they are the different empire who can change the sector but somewhere uh, we feel uh, no uh, it is not so much neutral and we are really uh, thankful that you have been uh, very frank uh, and eloquent uh, about your observations which are uh, absolutely uh, uh, hitting the bulls eye i would say in that sense so with that once again i thank you and i thank uh, also the participants for this lively discussion there has been few more questions which we could not answer uh, we are already overshooting uh, quite a substantive amount of time 15 minutes uh, almost and uh, we uh, wish you a very good evening uh, and uh, if you are staying at home uh, have a very safe stay and maybe uh, go back to the tv screen uh, to have a 
recall of what prime minister has addressed our nation at four o'clock and that's why we miss some of the participants but i think very enchanting discussion and we are really uh, benefited by these deep insights of professor tripathi thank you Masajal, sir thank you thank you okay namaskar to all yes, okay.